So it's the 15th of June and I've just filmed my wrap up for last week's reading vlog so that there's some sort of end to it but this morning it was like 1am, 2am so I don't know how much that counts and like which day it's on but I'm counting it as on the 15th so it's in this reading vlog instead. Hello! Uh, I finished Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carragher. Um, I only picked it up in the first place because I saw Zoe from You're a Book Nerd, Zoe. Um, she had it on her shelf and it looked good. I'd never seen them in Britain and I spotted them in a charity shop. Um, so I picked them up and I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it. I read the Gallagher Girls series by Ali Carter when I was a bit younger, about 15. And I still absolutely love those and this is essentially a steampunk Victorian version. And I'm not mad. I really, really enjoy it. And I think that Gail Carragher and Ali Carter should like write a book together because oh, that would be good. <laughs> so yeah, I finished that. And then the next book I'm wanting to read is Othello. Although, you know, maybe I will, maybe I won't get to it. It's a bit of a tough one. I've got to be like invested. And I'm also listening to two audiobooks at the minute. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Lungle, which I'm leaving for now because I got an audiobook out of the library. The Girl in the Blue Coat? I'm not sure, I can't remember who the author is, I'm so sorry. Um, hopefully I'll remember when I next update you on it, but I got it expecting to get it out of the library in like 10 days and it came now instead. I'm like, okay, apparently I'm reading that now. So the I own Wrinkle in Time so I can listen to that later, so I'm listening to that now. And I'm about to go out and return straight to the throne, back to the library, and do a food shop. So I'll be listening to some more of The Garden of Blue Coat. Started and rin and finished, finished A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan in like a few hours. And that was with me popping out to go to the doctors and go to the shops. And this is such a good kids book. It's darker than you'd expect. Kids can handle more than you think. It's such a unique idea and I really hope it looks like there might be a sequel and I really hope there is definitely one I want to keep reading from. While watching the England match I read from page 16 to page 40 of Othello, which doesn't sound like too much but Shakespearean prose always is a slower read for me just purely because it's not written in standard English and it takes me a little bit longer to comprehend and also because with poetry... Poetry? I said that because I do this as well. With plays and poems, I'll annotate. So, yeah. It takes a little bit more time with all the writing that I'm putting in it. And I know some of you think this is blasphemous, but it's just what I do to my, my plays and my poetry. So, are they on page 40 or 41? 42. I'm on page 41, so neither. <laughs> so yes, that's my update for now for Othello. It is only coming up to half ten, so I might read a bit more, but meh. Please excuse all of the mess that you're going to see within this like section of the video, but I'm currently trying to pack up a bit of my stuff. It's like the 18th, possibly, possibly 19th, I can't remember the date, of June, and I move out on the 1st of July. And I've got like a really intense work shift for a few days at the end of the month and my boyfriend's going to come visit in a few days so I'm trying to pack up stuff now, like as much as I can. So I'm going through my books and I'm trying to be realistic about what I can have. So this is the giant stack of books that I'm packing away <laughs> that I haven't read because the ones that I've read are already packed away. Uh, so. Right, just this is gonna go so badly. Okay, so <laughs> I shuffle back a bit and I will show you all of these books one by one and then show you the ones that I'm keeping. So The Witchfinder's Sister by Beth Underdown. This looks really really interesting. I really like this sort of thing. My friend got me it, but I just know that it's not gonna be one that I'm gonna pick up, so I might as well put it down or put it away. Uh ironically, this is already out, but I have and it was also out later in the UK than the US. Um, yeah, came out like five months later in the UK, 
and I've still not read it and it's big and like I don't have a deadline to reach so I'm not gonna pick it up so Renegades by Marissa Mayer off to the side <laughs> Jenny to the River Sea by Eva Ibbotson. I have the other two books in the same sort of cover style, The Star of Kazan and The Dragonfly Pool. Uh, so I got this from Oxfam and I got this purely because I'd like to have all three of them and the covers match and yeah, again, not gonna pick it up. I mean, I might have if it had been left on the shelf, but I'm deciding I'm not going to. Then I have Curtsies and Conspiracies, which is the second book in the Oh, what's it called? The Finishing School series. Um, the first one is Have to Get an Espionage, which I loved. And I really want to read this, but not, like, it's not as much of a priority as the books that I'm keeping, so... Mm. Then I've got Moriarty by Anthony Horowitz. I'm so excited for this, but I've waited forever so I can wait a bit longer. I've got Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. And although the same as most of these books, I'm really excited for it. It's a brand new series, so I may as well stick with the ones that I'm already, like, invested in, shall we say. Legend by Mary Lou. It's not one that I'm, like, immensely excited for, although I am looking forward to it, so... Mm. Truth Sister by Phil Gilvin. This is tiny writing, right up to the edge, really thick book, considering, like, how small it is, and despite the fact that I'm excited for the premise, I'm not going to read it this month. Then I've got The Song Rising by Samantha Shannon. I'm actually a little preview of what I'm going to keep. I'm keeping The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, which is book two. So there's no point keeping out book three when I haven't read book two yet. Because that's just silly. And then The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth, because this is book two in the duology of, like, Carve the Mark. So, you know, logic dictates that, dictates that I don't keep book two when I'm not keeping out book one. Then I have Fractured by Terry Terry. I loved Slated, I can't wait to get to this one, but it's just not a priority because I've waited for so many years, I can wait a bit longer. <laughs> All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr is a big book with small writing. I've posted it like every 100 pages to give me some motivation, I do that in some of the books. Um, but yeah, I want to read it, I won't read it this month. Then we've got A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Maas, Maas, I don't know. Um, looks interesting, I've only picked it up because of the hype, so I'm not bothered about leaving it for a while. Then The Beggar of Volubilis by Caroline Lawrence. I really want to read this, I absolutely love the series, but I've been reading them for years, so it's not like an urgent read. Then I've got Anne of Green Gables by Ella Montgomery. Um, I'm going to be giving this to my old uh, primary elementary school once I've read it, but they don't like need it urgently and I don't want to read it yet, so... <laughs> Then I've got The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. I'm really excited for this one, but again, it's just not one that I'm going to pick up within the next, like, ten days. And then I've got The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan, book one in the um, Kane Chronicles. And I just don't want to start a new series when I have so much other stuff to read. And the last one that is getting packed away... It's In the Myths of Life by Jennifer Worth. This is, I think, the third book, possibly the fourth. I don't know which. I think it might be the fourth. Um, in the, like, it's not really a series because it's memoirs, it's real life, but in the Call the Midwife series. Um, and this is, oh, there she is. This is small writing, detail text, will make me weep, and it's just, I'll read it when I get home. <laughs> Um, and then in terms of the books I'm keeping, I'm just like the mess of my room. Um, I'm currently, I'm not very far in, I'm like 18 pages in, but I'm currently reading Othello by William Shakespeare. The two bookmarks are because there's stuff at the beginning and end, so it's just so I know one where I am and then two where I'm going to finish. So obviously that one's staying out while I read it. And then here is my messy shelf with my collapsed Legos. Boyfriend got me some Lego figurines of the Harry Potter characters and because I was tidying up they've all fallen over so I'll fix them in a bit. Um, so I've got my Kindle here, that's a receipt. I've got my Kindle and I got my book cover because obviously they're staying out. And then the books that I'm keeping are Awful Monster Spy by Maclean. I've started this but I'm currently listening to the audiobook of um, The Girl in the Blue Coat. And that's also World War II based, so I don't want to read that till I finish the audiobook. But that's on my TBR for the month, so it's staying. Same with A Sky Painted Gold. I've also started this one. It's by Laura Wood. And yeah, 
it's on my TBR. It comes out next month. I want to read it. King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard is book three in the Red Queen series, and it's also on my TBR for the month. Oh, there we go. And I think that's it for the books that are actually on my TBR physically. I've got some on my Kindle. Um, so the My Mother by Samantha Shannon is staying because I'd like to get to it. A Place Called Perfect by Helena Duggan is staying because it's like a nice little quick read if I want a kid's book and it could like get me out of a reading slump, so it's staying for now. The End of the Day by Claire North is... it was a gift from my boyfriend, so I'm keeping it out because he's coming around this week. So, you know, I'll look good then. And also, you know, it'd be nice to read a present from him if I get through all the other books. Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo was given to me by one of my friends um, because she's absolutely lovely and again, I'd like to get to that at some point soon. The Medusa Project Hit Squad by Sophie McKenzie was given to me by my parents. They bought it for me when I spotted it in a charity shop and yeah, I'd like to get to it before I go home to, you know, show my appreciation of them buying it for me. And then the last book that I'm keeping is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. I got that for Christmas, it's now June, I should probably read it. So, very close up thing of my face there. But yeah, so that's all the books that I'm packing away versus not packing away. Um, yeah, there's a lot. This is just a really quick update, so I'm sorry if you can hear my shower. My shower? My fan going in the bathroom. Hit yeah, a shower. Um, all the noises outside. As my window is open. Um, I read A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. It's due out next month and it was so good it was oh, i had a few problems with it not many but it was such a good book i think the problems i had were one she used the phrase like she let out a breath that she didn't know she was holding two the ending felt a bit blah, blah, just rushed and three there was a black character that kind of felt as if he was put in there just to give one of the more main characters further dimension he didn't seem to be a man in his own right um but at the same time it's beautifully written i was absolutely in love with it the ending you should definitely pick this one up it's another contemporary apparently i like contemporaries so that's something new i found out about myself this year i don't know how much i will be filming from now on I can't actually remember when the seven days is meant to end. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Seven times three. Twenty-one. It's the twentieth today. <laughs> so this is probably going to be the end of week three. I will read some more. However, boyfriend's coming today. He's going to arrive in an hour and a half. And so I don't tend to film when he's here. And... Like, I did it when I was at his, but then I, we had the whole house to roam, and I don't know if I'm gonna have time to film. I had been going to actually show you, but then I realised that was stupid. Jamal Evans, who is the writer for the Bamford Candy series, one of my favourite series, is, um, is in the middle of, like, finishing up the third book. He's finished it, he's going through editing it and things like that, and he's sent me it so that I can help him from the reader's point of view. I don't have a lot of historical knowledge, just the generic British public historical knowledge. Um, and he sent me it so I can read through it and check that everything flows because he's had some feedback from beta readers that it isn't quite perfect. And I'm so excited to read it. And it's on a Word document on my laptop, which is going to make it a little bit awkward. But at the same time, I like... A quick ending to my June the 15th to 21st vlog, because I never actually finished it because the boyfriend arrived. Um, so I finished Ekka and Espionage, I read A Place Called Perfect, and I read A Sky Painted Gold, all of which were four or five stars. So I had a really good reading week and I made a good dent into some other stuff as well. So thank you very much for watching. Sorry that this one and the next reading vlog are really higgledy piggledy. I haven't used that word in a long while. Um, it's been a bit of a hectic life at the minute. I'll be back on track soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.